Did you know that you are called to be a saint? Keep watching. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about building virtue through and with our money. In a papal encyclical, which is just a special letter that a pope writes to teach us more about our Catholic faith, called Lumen Gentium, Pope St. Paul VI taught us more about what's called the universal call to holiness. What this means is that all baptized Christians are called to be holy as God is holy. We're called to be saints. Holiness isn't something exclusively for priests or nuns, but for you and I, each one of us. So how does this call to holiness relate to money? While each of us will be entrusted with different amounts of money in our lives, we are all called to be good stewards of it. The way that we use or think about money can either help us become saints or it could end up getting in the way. In the Gospel of Mark in the Bible, chapter 10, if you want to look it up later, we hear the story of the rich young man. And it said this, As he was setting on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before Jesus, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, teacher, all of these I've observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At that statement, his face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. In this story, the young man is eager to know Jesus. He follows all the commandments and wants to know more. But Jesus knew that money and possessions had a hold in this young man's heart. So he challenged the man to leave it and follow him. But we know in the story that the young man couldn't give up his riches and went away sad. We want you to become the saints that you're called to be, to keep money in its proper place in your heart and to handle it however God asks you to. So, no matter how much you might have or what he might ask you to do with it, you can say yes and avoid having to walk away sad. So let's look at the lives of our brothers and sisters, the saints who've gone before us and see how might we be called to steward our money in this world. Sometimes our Lord calls his saints to give up everything and to follow him, including money like the rich young man. Think of St. Francis. He grew up in a very wealthy family, but Jesus asked him to give it all away, even renouncing his inheritance, and to instead go and preach the gospel. He founded the Franciscan religious order and trusted God to provide for all of their needs. Or you have St. Catherine Drexel. She grew up in a very wealthy family in Philadelphia and helped her mother give money to the sick and the poor three days a week. When she was older, Jesus asked her to become a religious sister and to start a new community. She herself took a vow of poverty, but she used the inheritance given to her to buy land and to build schools for Black and Native Americans all across the country. But we aren't always called to give up everything and to follow Jesus. Most often, our Lord calls the saints to steward the money wisely, which includes giving some, but not all of it away. Think of Blessed Carlo Acutis. He was a gamer, a computer programmer, and he loves soccer and the Eucharist. His mother said that with his savings, Carlo bought sleeping bags for homeless people, and in the evenings, he brought them some hot drinks. He said it was better to have one less pair of shoes and to be able to do an additional good work with the money not spent on shoes. He was also a good steward of his talents. He ended up creating a website for people all around the world to learn about Eucharistic miracles. Or there is Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati. On a trip to Vienna, he saw firsthand the poverty-stricken condition of the boys and girls who lived there. And without hesitation, he gave his travel money to them, saying that he'd be fine just eating one meal a day or having a cup of coffee with milk late in the afternoon. Pierre also brought hope by sharing his time and his friendship and his love for the sacraments. He prayed with people. He brought them to church. He led them to confession. He was generous with his time, his talents, and his treasure. Lastly, as long as we're doing what we can to be good stewards, sometimes our Lord calls his saints to humility by living a very simple life without much money. Think of St. Bernadette. She was the oldest of nine children and grew up in a very poor home. She didn't have money to share with others. 
She suffered from very ill health and she wasn't educated. But Bernadette loved God very much, and when the Blessed Mother appeared to her at Lourdes when she was only 14, she shared that gift with the entire church. Today, Lourdes, France is a pilgrimage site where miracles are still happening. So whether you have a lot of money, like the good steward who was given five talents of money, or you have little, a little bit of money, like the steward who was maybe given one talent, you are called to live generously and to become a saint. To be a saint, to be a good steward. We must remember that everything that we have has been given to us from our loving Father in heaven. He's our Father. Jesus is our brother. And our family business is the salvation of souls. By the way that we interact with and use our time, our talents, and our treasure, or our money, we can grow closer to God and serve his church and one another. So however Jesus calls you to use money in this life, to give it up and follow him, to give away some of it while you save, spend, and invest the rest, or to be content without having money sometimes. Say yes to that call. This is part of the special job that God has for you in this world. In the next video, we're going to talk about four superpowers that we have as Catholics. So stay with me and I'll see you there.